Hello friends, welcome to Dungeons & Dragonfly, where I adapt various characters for use in D&D. I'm Dragonfly9078, and today I'll be building one of my personal favorite characters, Hiccup, from How to Train Your Dragon. For a bit of background, Hiccup is a Viking from the Isle of Burke. Unlike the rest of his tribe, Hiccup was always small, weak, and generally a disappointment as a Viking, especially considering he was the son of Stoic the Vast, the tribe's chief. Hiccup was incredibly intelligent, though and during one of the routine dragon raids on the village, he shot down a Night Fury, the most elusive breed of dragon. Unable to kill the dragon, and filled with guilt over rendering him unable to fly, Hiccup named the dragon Toothless, and together they freed the dragons from the evil queen who controlled them, bringing peace to Burke. So what do we want from this build? Well, obviously, we'll need Toothless, a dragon companion who can fly, breathe fire, and just be our best friend. Apart from Toothless, we also need to be good at interacting with all of the other dragons. As the first to train a dragon, Hiccup is seen as the expert in all things draconic. And to help with our training, we'll need a variety of gadgets and mechanical know-how, stemming from our days as a blacksmith's apprentice. Looking over at ability scores, I'll be using the standard point array. If you want to roll for stats, that's fine, just make sure your dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom are high enough to multiclass. We'll start off by dumping strength. Hiccup's physical weakness is a huge part of his character. Dexterity will be 13. He may be weak, but he's pretty nimble and has clever fingers. Constitution is a bit low. Again, he's not up to Viking physical standards. But intelligence will be 15, since he's almost certainly the smartest person on the island. We'll need wisdom for empathy and dragon training, so we'll make it 14. And finish up with a 12 in charisma, because Hiccup kind of sucks at talking to people. Like, seriously, anytime he tries to convince anyone of anything, he fails until someone else steps in to help, or they actually see physical proof of what he's talking about. Now, Hiccup is a human, but he studied the dragons and used the knowledge that he gained to enhance his capabilities through the use of his armor. So we'll actually be making him a Simic hybrid. We get plus two to our constitution and plus one to any other stat. I would round off intelligence to 16. And we get 60 feet of dark vision, useful since we ride a Night Fury. The main reason I went with Simic hybrid was for the animal enhancements. We get one at first level and another at fifth level. The one we're after is Manticlide, which was the only thing I could find that accurately replicated Hiccup's wingsuit. Whenever we fall and aren't incapacitated, we can subtract 100 feet from the fall when we calculate any falling damage. And for every foot we go down, we can move 2 feet horizontally. And since we're using Simic Hybrid because of Hiccup's armor, it makes sense for our 5th level enhancement to be Carapace, giving us plus 1 to our AC as long as we aren't wearing heavy armor. Burke is a fishing village, so for our background we use Harbor Folk giving us proficiency in athletics and sleight of hand, as well as with water vehicles and one gaming set. Though we'll switch out the gaming set for cartographer's tools so we can make maps of all the distant lands we come across. Hiccup is an inventor, so naturally he makes a good artificer. We get two skills from the artificer list. I would go with investigation and history, as well as proficiency with thieves tools, tinker's tools, and one set of artisan's tools. Thanks to our apprenticeship with Gobber, we'll go with smith's tools. We're also a magical tinkerer letting us put minor magical or sensory effects into tiny objects. For our cantrips, Green Flame Blade coats our sword in monstrous nightmare saliva, lighting it on fire and dealing fire damage equal to our intelligence modifier to a creature next to our attack target. As we level up, the damage increases to up to 3d8 plus our intelligence modifier, and we deal fire damage to the actual attack target as well. We'll also take Mending to put our crafting knowledge to use by fixing a broken object. Featherfall is useful if we fall a distance greater than what our wingsuit can handle. Catapult throws an object in a straight line for 90 feet, dealing 3d8 damage to a creature it hits if they fail a dexterity save. And Absorb Elements works well for our flame-resistant armor, giving us resistance to our choice of acid, fire, lightning, cold, or thunder damage as a reaction, then adding 1d6 damage of the chosen type to our first melee attack on our next turn. Second level artificers get to make their own magic items with infusions. We'll learn to make prosthetic limbs to build Toothless a new tail, enhance defense and weapon, add one to our AC or attack and damage rolls for some expertly crafted gear made with secret dragon knowledge, and Hiccup strikes me as a bit of a lightweight, so we'll go with the Tanker to Sobriety, so we can drink all the ale we want and never get drunk. At third level, we can pick out the right tool for the job, manifesting a set of artisan's tools from Gobber's shop with an hour-long ritual, and we'll build our special dragon armor as an armorer. Armorers get proficiency with heavy armor and smith's tools, though since we already have smith's tools, we'll take leather worker's tools instead. Our dragon armor is extra special because it doesn't have a strength requirement. It can't be removed against our will, we can use it as a spellcasting focus, and it expands to cover our entire body. 
even replacing lost limbs, so we can have our own prosthetic to match Toothless's. Hiccup actually wears two different armors in the second and third movies. In two it looks like leather, and in three it's basically full plate, so I'm going to split the difference and call it scale mail for the pun. Both scale and plate have stealth penalties though, and we need to be stealthy to free capture dragons, so we'll make our armor into infiltrator armor to eliminate that disadvantage. This also increases our walking speed by 5 feet, and gives us a lightning launcher, a ranged weapon that can use our intelligence for its rolls, and deals 1d6 lightning damage on a hit. Once per turn, we can also deal an additional 1d6 damage to a creature that we hit with it. We get a couple of spells that are always prepared as an armor. Magic Missile shoots three darts that always hit and deal 1d4 plus 1 damage per dart. And Thunder Wave lets us do our best Thunder Drum impression, blasting a 15-foot cube with shockwaves that deal 2d8 thunder damage to any creatures in the area who fail a constitution save, as well as pushing them back 10 feet. If they pass the save, they take half damage and aren't pushed. We get our first ability score improvement at 4th level, and we'll bump our intelligence up to 18 for better spellcasting. But if we're going to train a dragon, we need to get out of the forge and into the woods. So next we'll jump over to ranger, getting us a skill from the ranger list. The obvious choice is, of course, animal handling. As a canny deft explorer, we get expertise in one skill. I would say investigation, since Hiccup figures out pretty much everything he knows about dragons just by watching and interacting with them. And we pick a favorite enemy, like humanoids giving us plus two on damage rolls against them and advantage on checks to track them or remember information about them. We pick a fighting style at second level, and I'm going to say archery, because I think it's really overlooked how good an archer hiccup is. It does only come up once in the movies during Stoic's funeral, but he just lifts the bow and fires an arrow dead center into the funeral barge with barely a second to aim. It's a really impressive shot, and we see several of the others who are better fighters just completely miss. For spells, Ensnaring Strike is pretty much exactly what Hiccup did to Toothless in the first movie. The first time we hit with a weapon attack, the target is wrapped in thorny vines that restrain them and deal piercing damage every round if they fail a strength save. And Fog Cloud is the other function of our sword, spraying a cloud of hideous zippelback gas to obscure a 20-foot radius area. Third level rangers get primeval awareness to communicate simple ideas with animals, as well as to convince them that we mean no harm or to tell their mood. If we want to do the same thing magically, we have Animal Friendship, which charms an animal that fails a wisdom save for up to 24 hours. But to achieve the close bond that we share with Toothless, we'll become a Drake Warden, letting us summon a Drake Companion, a small dragon that acts on our turn and that we can command with our bonus action. We can summon the dragon with an action, and he sticks around for a number of hours equal to our proficiency bonus. We can only summon him once per day unless we burn a spell slot to do it again. I'm not going to go through the full stat block, but when we summon him, we do pick a type of energy. He gains immunity to that type, deals that type of damage with his bite, and can use his reaction to add a d6 of that type of damage to the damage of a weapon attack that he or another creature within 30 feet of him hits with. Thanks to our bond with Toothless, we also learn the Thaumaturgy cantrip, as well as how to speak Draconic. Now that we have Toothless, we can focus on the rest of the dragons. The Animal Handler feat bumps our wisdom up to 15 and gives us expertise in animal handling. Also, we can use our bonus action to command a friendly animal within 60 feet either telling them exactly what to do on their next turn, or giving them a general order that they follow for a minute. Fifth level rangers get extra attack to attack twice instead of once with the attack action, and second level spells like Animal Messenger to send off a terrible terror to deliver a message of 25 words or less to a person we describe. Sixth level rangers get to pick a greater favored enemy. Of course, we'll go with dragons, so we deal an additional 4 damage to them and have advantage on checks to track or remember information about them as well as on saving throws against their spells and abilities. We're also no longer just a canny Deft Explorer, but a roving one as well, further increasing our speed by 5 feet, and giving us a climbing and swimming speed as we get accustomed to our peg leg. 7th level Drake Wardens develop the Bond of Fang and Scale, giving us resistance to the same damage type that Toothless is immune to as we line our armor with his scales. It also lets him deal extra damage of that type with his bite, and gives him wings and a 40-foot flying speed. He's still small, so we can't ride him, but... Hey, he's actually probably about the same size he was in the original books. We get another spell at 7th level, but spells are not exactly Hiccup's focus, so we'll just go with Locate Animals and Plants. At 8th level, we are Fleet of Foot, letting us dash with our bonus action. And we get another Ability Score improvement, rounding off our Dexterity to 14 and our Wisdom to 16. Ninth level gets us 3rd level spells. Protection from Energy gives us resistance to our choice of Acid, Cold, Fire, Lightning, or Thunder in case we don't have Toothless around, or we need a second energy resistance. We can hide in plain sight at 10th level, 
giving minus 10 to any perception checks made to see us as long as we don't move, and we become a tireless depth explorer. A number of times per day equal to our proficiency bonus, we can get 1d8 plus our wisdom modifier temporary HP as an action. We also recover from one level of exhaustion on each short rest, so we can stay up late tinkering and still be good to go in the morning. 11th level Drake Wardens get a Breath Weapon. As an action, either we or Toothless can exhale a 30-foot cone of Acid, Fire, Cold, Lightning, or Poison, dealing 6d6 damage to every creature in that area who fails a dexterity save, half damage on a success. Now Toothless has plenty of fire on his own, so it makes sense for him, but for Hiccup, I'm going to call this Igniting the Zippleback Gasp. We can use this once per day, though we can burn a spell slot that's at least 3rd level to use it again. Speaking of, we get another 3rd level spell. Elemental Weapon makes our sword a plus 1 weapon, and lets it deal an additional d4 damage of the energy type of our choice, which is usually going to be fire. 12th level rangers get another ability score improvement, I would say bump dexterity to 16. Then we get 4th level spells at level 13, but none of them really grab me, so we'll jump back to 1st level and pick up Snare to set an invisible rope trap that restrains a creature who crosses it and fails a dexterity save for up to 8 hours. 14th level rangers can hide as a bonus action, and 15th level rangers get our last spell, in this case water breathing, because Hiccup and Toothless have nearly drowned on multiple occasions, so they really need to work on that. 15th level Drake Wardens also perfect their bond. Toothless deals even more damage with his bite. We can use our reaction to give either Toothless or ourself resistance to damage when we're hit with an attack, as long as we're within 30 feet of each other. The damage of our Drake's Breath increases to 8d6, and most importantly, Toothless finally becomes large so we can finally ride on him. Our capstone is the 16th level of Ranger for one last ability score improvement, and now that Toothless is big enough to ride, we'll pick up the Mounted Combatant feat. We get advantage on melee attacks against any creatures smaller than Toothless, we can protect Toothless by forcing attacks aimed at him to target us instead, and Toothless gets evasion, letting him take no damage from a successful dexterity save, and only half damage on a fail, if he would normally take half damage on a success and full damage on a fail. But Toothless isn't just a pet or a mode of transportation, he's Hiccup's best friend. And he's honestly probably smarter than a lot of the Vikings on Berk. He's a character in his own right, and he's got some tricks that the Drake Companion stat block doesn't cover, so we're going to give him 20 levels of the Spellcaster Sidekick class. We'll take the Mage Path, meaning that we learn wizard spells and use intelligence as our spellcasting modifier. Several of our spells are going to be variations on Fire Breath, like Fire Bolt, Burning Hand, Scorching Ray, though Fireball in particular is actually the most accurate to how Toothless's Fire Breath works, shooting a projectile that then explodes, rather than a continuous stream of flame. We'll also lean into the abilities he finds out about in the third movie, with spells like Invisibility, Greater Invisibility, Lightning Bolt, and Thunder Step. Thunder Step is especially good for us, as we can carry Hiccup with us as we teleport if he's riding us. And we'll get Expeditious Retreat and Haste to make us the fastest dragon of all. Haste also serves as our alpha mode, proving our supremacy by boosting our AC and dexterity saves by 2, doubling our speed, and giving us an additional action each turn that we can use to attack, disengage, dash, hide, or use an object. All spellcasters get two skills from the spellcaster list, proficiency in intelligence, wisdom, or charisma saves, and proficiency with light armor. For skills, insight and persuasion seem the most in-character, unless your DM will let you take intimidation instead of persuasion, and we'll take proficiency in charisma saves to go along with the dexterity and wisdom save proficiencies we automatically get from being a drake companion. We get five ability score improvements over the course of our levels, two of which are going to feats to improve our sneakiness. Skill Expert will bump our dexterity to 13, and gives us both proficiency and expertise in stealth. And Skulker lets us hide when we're only lightly obscured, such as if we're in dim light. We also don't reveal our position if we miss with a ranged attack while we're hidden, and we don't have disadvantage on perception checks due to dim light. We do have dark vision, of course, but that turns darkness into dim light, so this still helps. For our other ability score improvements, we'll round off dexterity to 14 and constitution to 16, and bump intelligence up to 12 so we have a positive modifier for our spellcasting, which will help with potent cantrips and empowered spells, which add our spellcasting modifier to the damage of our cantrips and the damage of all of our leveled spells of the school of our choice, in this case, evocation. The capstone for spellcaster is actually pretty great. Focused casting prevents us from dropping concentration due to taking damage, which is good for expeditious retreat and invisibility, and fantastic for greater invisibility and haste. Now that the build is complete, the question becomes, how good is it? Well, we have two characters for the price of one, both of which act at the same time, and both of which are dangerous in their own right. 
Toothless does more damage, but Hiccup is a great support. We're also fantastic at hit and run tactics, with powerful ranged spells and great mobility thanks to our flight, invisibility, and teleportation. And we're very hard to take down, with about 280 combined HP, multiple ways to resist damage, and evasion thanks to mounted combatant. And remember, even if Hiccup is incapacitated, Toothless can act on his own without being commanded, so he can take Hiccup away from the fight to get healed. On the other hand, Toothless is only around for 6 hours a day, unless Hiccup burns spell slots to keep him around, so we do need to be a little bit careful about that time. There's also a bit of a rule snarl between How to Train Your Dragon and Dungeons and Dragons. Dragons in How to Train Your Dragon are pretty much just dogs, you know, low intelligence, loyal, trainable. They're very different in Dungeons and Dragons, meaning that all those abilities that make sense for Hiccup, like Animal Handler, Primeval Awareness, and Animal Friendship, actually don't work on dragons in D&D, because they specify beasts which are different. And finally, it just takes a really long time for the build to come online, with Toothless only becoming big enough to ride at level 19, or level 15 at the earliest if you skip the Artificer levels. But the Drake Warden is practically designed for Hiccup, and I love both of these boys. Ride your dragon and show the whole world that there's more to them than just mindless violence. Even if it gets you disowned, your father will come around. No one can resist that face. <laughs> yeah, you, you found my helmet. Oh. Hey, you found my helmet. That's where you've been? Mm. Buddy, thank you. You are amazing. I hope you enjoyed the build. If you have any feedback or suggestions for characters you'd like to see me build, please leave them in the comments below. Leave a like or a sub if you want to see more, and if you want to support what I'm doing here, you can check out my Patreon for access to our Discord channel and early access to future builds. Thank you for watching, friends. I will see y'all later.